I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're talking about a wonderful book. It's called Out of Darkness into Light by Laura Lee Lindholm. It is a gripping tale of transformation in the Ethiopian highlands where modern faith meets ancient challenges. Today, we will discover how a community development team's spiritual journey echoed the biblical book of Acts, bringing light to a region shadowed by hardship. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her delightful book. The links are below this interview. Laura Lee, great to see you here today on Spotlight. It's great to be here. What a privilege. Privilege is all mine. there's nothing I like more than talking about my book. Well, that's good because it's a great book. It should be talked about. This began with a trip to Ethiopia. Tell us a little bit about that trip. Well, it was more than a trip. We had three children and we volunteered as missionaries and it was a life move halfway around the world to the top of the mountains. Amazing. How long did you spend there? How long ago was this? And tell us a little bit of what you experienced. It was 50 years ago mm -hmm. and we took our three young children and were part of a community development team with a doctor, a vet, an agriculturalist, and my husband taught rug weaving in a very remote, backward area. Amazing, amazing. Now, what inspired you to travel to this area? Was it through your church? Tell us a little bit about that. It was, we were Baptist missionaries, and they were putting together this team to do a new kind of uh, work in helping the people with their most basic needs. And at the same time, we taught the Bible. But they were all Orthodox Christians and theoretically knew the Bible, and but they had never read it in their own language. They spoke the ancient language of Giz, which nobody speaks anymore. So it's just chanting. Amazing, amazing. How long did you spend in Ethiopia? We were in Africa for a total of 18 years and wow. 12 of those were in Ethiopia. So 18 so, years you spend in Africa with your young children doing missionary work. So your children went from being young children to young adults, right? That's right. And they went to boarding school uh, and came and went to the mountains and back to the city. And then they went on their own to college. And so eventually it was just my husband and me there. Amazing. Amazing. This is an amazing sacrifice on some levels for you to give all of those years to a foreign land but it also enriched you, correct? Personally oh, yes. and spiritually. It, it was. It was really exciting and wonderful to see God do such amazing things. And then some things were kind of awful, but then something good happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it was a battle between good and evil and good always won. About how old were you when you first uh, arrived in Africa? We were um, in our late 20s when mm. we went there. Now, gr and growing actually, up. actually, yeah, yeah. after we came home um, in our 40s, 20 years later, we went back again, off and on. And we've been going off and on ever since up until recently. Amazing. Amazing. When you're growing up, did you ever dream that you would spend basically two decades in a different continent in Africa? It was my childhood dream. And believe it or not, my husband had the same dream. And God put us together in high school in the band. And and it, uh, when we finished college, we set off for Africa just as we had dreamed. Amazing. Amazing. That is wonderful because a lot of people have dreams. A lot of people don't follow their dreams. But you followed your dreams, and even though it was a challenging dream, I mean, you know, it wasn't an easy place to live. Ethiopia was uh, dealing with famine while you were there, correct? Famine was before and after, but mm -hmm. they were never far from famine. Famine right. was lurking at the door 
all yeah. the time. Every because they don't irrigate, it's based on rain. So if it doesn't rain, then they don't have any food and they can't control that. Tell us a little bit about your work over those 18 years. What kind of things did you do? Well, my husband taught rug weaving to Orthodox priests and deacons because they worked for their church, but their church did pay the priest a dollar and a half a month. They needed income. They ha Everybody had sheep, but they didn't do anything much with the wool. So he taught them how to make rugs, pile carpet with fancy cross decorations on them. And then we had a rug market every month and bought them from them, took them to the city and sold them mostly to foreigners because they're beautiful rugs. And so a lot of money came into the countryside then because of this rug project. Amazing, amazing. And these were skills that your husband had uh, that he learned in the States? Yes, actually, he was a high school biology teacher and we, we were missionaries in Nigeria. And then they opened the door to Ethiopia and they said they needed a rug weaving teacher. Well, he said, well, if Navajo Indians can weave, I can weave. And he read a book and he watched an Indian by the road and he bought a little sample rug, a one foot square and said, okay, I'm ready. And he took off for Ethiopia and was a wonderful rug weaving teacher. Amazing, amazing. You mentioned that you have traveled back and forth to uh, Africa ever since. Um, why do you go back there? Tell us your connection. And uh, were those some of the best years in your life, do you feel? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're Ethiopians at heart. But the reason we went back was when we left Ethiopia, it was because the communists came and ran out all the missionaries. And we left this little fledgling book group of believers wondering if they would ever, uh, what would become. Uh, we knew their faith was strong, but they were few and they didn't have income. And we went back 18 years later and found that they had grown to 12,000 and had formed a denomination of a few churches. And so we worked along beside them then off and on. And we started a nonprofit bookstore. People donate books to us and it's called Heart for Ethiopia. Since 2006, we have sent a million six hundred thousand dollars to Ethiopia to support these churches. And today there's 350 churches. They're Amazing. doing wonderful. Amazing. So you really started something there. You really helped spread the word of Christ among this community that did know a little bit about Christianity, but had never read the Bible. Is that what it was? Tell us a little bit of what you dealt with. I know the book also uh, talks about evil spirits in the community and that kind of thing. Tell us about where they were spiritualistically and as far as their Christian life goes. The Orthodox Church in that area of the mountains, the priests learned the mass in a language that they no longer speak. So it was like music to the ears, but mm -hmm. it didn't do much for the soul. And they had, uh, we, the first person to really understand the gospel of Jesus Christ was a priest. Mm -hmm. And we were thrilled because one person understood. And then he came two weeks later and said, I need to burn my magic books. And we said, what do you mean? And he said, I'm the head wizard of this whole area. So he brought his magic books. Everybody saw him throw them in the fire. And they were sure that horrible things would happen to him. His wife would leave him. His kids would get sick. His animals would die. His crops would fail. But God protected him. And he was able to give a testimony then to the community that God is real, that mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the Savior. And from that day on, we relived Acts, a spiritual battle back and forth between good and evil. And... Uh, a number of people, their lives changed because of it. Yeah, amazing. And that's one of the goals of Christianity is to drive out these pagan religions that sometimes hold people back because of these false beliefs and fears and so forth and so on. That's really wonderful work you've done. So this book is a half century in the making because it began when you were in your late 20s and you spent you know, decades on and off in Africa, in Ethiopia. 
Tell us what it was like writing this book. Well, actually, when we got had to leave because of communism, we went uh, came home to the States and I sat down and for three months I wrote that book. It was so fresh on my mind. Mm. All the things that had happened like X and that book ends right then at the time we left Ethiopia and left this fledgling book group of believers. And then we had 20, 18 years at home, actually. And then for 18 years, we went back and forth. Mm. And so I need to write another book about mm. what's going on now. I did write an addendum at the end that tells where they are today. But there are so many pits and pinnacles in the years in, after that and until now that there's a whole nother story to be told. Amazing. I'm really just absolutely amazed by your story. I think it says such wonderful work because so many people are looking for purpose and meaning in life. And uh, the problem is they haven't done one quarter of what you've done. And that's how you find purpose and meaning for sure. What do you hope readers take away from your book, Out of Darkness into Light? I hope they see that God is alive and working today, that he, uh, people would love to be back at the time of Jesus and hear him teach and preach and be with the apostles, but God is still doing things today. And all we need to do is look for what he's doing and join him. Absolutely, and you joined him decades and decades ago, no doubt in helping shed some light into an area that was dark when it came to Christianity. And you helped uh, spread a number of churches that has grown into a wonderful Christian community there. Uh, wonderful work. Can I ask you one more question? I wanted to ask you, what was it like when you came back after 18 years from Africa? You were driven out of Ethiopia because of the communists. What was life like then? You were so used to having this other existence what did you do? We had more culture shock when we came back to the United States than we did when we went to Africa. We had been in this close-knit community of missionaries and with these Ethiopians who were just loving to hear God's word. And we came home to the United States and people weren't all that interested. And we felt like uh, Joseph in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And we wondered why we were in exile. God, why did you send us back? Why can't we be there? And so my husband started a business called Kingdom Homes for God's Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we bought at the bottom of the market, cheap houses, five to $15,000. And re he personally remodeled them in hot Texas. And then we sold them to people and acted like the bank. So they were paying us. So we re remodeled and sold 65 houses and we still have people paying us. And that's why we could go back and help the new Christians because we had this income. So God was in it all along. Amazing. And you're also doing God's work there in giving people shelter and taking homes that were dilapidated and run down and that were basically unwanted and turning them into livable homes. I can't believe all that you and your husband have done. It is wonderful. And I'm so happy to support this book here today. It is called Out of Darkness into Light. It is written by Laura Lee Lindholm. It is an amazing tale of transformation in the Ethiopian highlands. It's a story of where modern faith meets ancient challenges, how a community development team's spiritual journey echoed the biblical books of Acts and brought light to a region that was just shadowed by hardship. Laura Lee, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate your time. You are my hero. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.